The Goat House is back after an absurd Monday night football game here, breaking down how every single NFL team looked in week two. We got tears and grades every single week, every Monday night. Let's break it down. Here we are in week two, and the Panthers still have their own tier, and they are still in their own tier after a brutal outing against the Chargers. Nothing going on offense for Bryce Young and company. Three points. Couldn't stop the run. Couldn't stop J.K. Dobbins. On defense, the bigger talking point is Bryce Young has now been benched, so it says a lot what the new coaching staff thinks of him because it's only been two weeks. Have to think they're a little bit better with Andy Dalton, but how much better? We'll, we'll wait and see, but the Panthers after week two's performance are in the bottom tier based on that performance. And once again, they're not alone. The Dolphins and the Colts join them. The Dolphins, man, I think the, the excuse will be Tua's injury, and it's not really a legitimate one here. Tua was bad. The offense line was bad. Mike McDaniel was bad. The play calling was brutal. There's a lot of overthinking, but the worst part was the run defense, non-existent. A lot of bad run defenses out there right now, but theirs might have been the worst. Again, like I said, non-existent, just wide open lanes for James Cook. So there are more problems, way more problems than just the Tua injury. And the Colts, yeah, I know they kind of came back and the defense didn't give up a ton of points. And, you know, it was somewhat close compared to these other two teams, but man, Given the given the situation, they, they catch a big time break. You know, they luck out with no Jordan Love, but Malik Willis, a guy that was on the Titans a few weeks ago, and they know that they're not gonna have him throw down field. They know they can stack the box, and they still cannot stop the run. Absolutely awful against the run. Richardson was bad, the play calling was bad, just a lot of overthinking the options, whether it was a read option or a speed option, it was bad, it was slow, so given the circumstances, how they looked, and they got outplayed more than the score showed, uh, they played at Panthers level tier here in week two. The D tier, the Broncos being at the top, like closest to C, uh, the defense played all right. Steelers kind of hit the brakes a little bit, uh, you know, kind of playing it safe because they knew their opponent um, offense was just so brutal. You know, Bo, Bo Nix was was brutal. The offense line wasn't helping him either, but uh, they finally get something going with that trick play, and then Bo Nix gives it right back. And they had opportunities in this one. Uh, and defensively, you know, they still struggle stopping the run. You know, overall, they kept the Steelers out of the end zone a ton, so that, that was solid, but just looking like one of the worst teams in football, especially based off week two. The Jags, a very disappointing outing. I think the main... You know, the main thing here, uh, two things, actually. Uh, Doug Peterson, very, very poorly called game from him. Should have ran the ball more, understand what's working. He was acting like they were they were down huge with no time left. At one point, yeah, the, the very end of the game. And then Trevor Lawrence is not seeing open guys. You know, were they wide open? No, but timing is off on throws and taking that safety, even though he didn't have a ton of time. His job wasn't easy. He's just, ex I'm expecting way more from him, so... You know, the Browns, given the circumstances there, I mean, Deshaun Watson dealing with off-the-field issues, the distraction, they're awful last week. I mean, god-awful last week. And uh, if the Browns would have ran the ball more, too, I think they would have won easier. So, I mean, both team, both coaching staffs, play callers, uh, not sticking to the ground when it was working for some reason. The Cowboys, and they got embarrassed. They were close to being in the Panthers tier, but offense moved the ball. Yeah, they were disappointing in the red zone, but... The, you know, the defense was just giving up points like crazy, so the offense was kind of put in a situation where, yeah, obviously we have to throw, throw, throw every down, but it looks like Lamb has to carry that offense, so that's not great. They did get embarrassed. Again, at least they moved the ball. That kind of kept them at like a D- minus for me. And the Rams, you kind of give them a little bit of, there's no passes here, but a pass from being in the Panthers tier because they were completely depleted, got more injured. So what do you expect from a team like that in the NFL when everyone's trying to kind of click in the gear here in week two? So they're right in the Cowboys range at a D minus. It just didn't really quite feel like Panthers level there for those teams. Some a little better, you know, the Broncos more of the D plus range. Uh, but a lot of disappointing here. Quite a few disappointing teams so far. And quite a few teams in the C tier. The Niners were a tricky one to grade. They almost got in that BC tier because they, they did have production. They did have big plays. They kind of dug themselves out of a hole. And against a good defense, they had some big plays. And they... And Fred Warner, you know, for the for the Niners on defense, they made some plays to keep them in the game. But, man, if you watch this game, it, it, the Vikings outplayed them completely, especially, you know, comparing it to the score. So they, they did really get outplayed, and there was a lot of sloppiness uh, to them in this game after looking like maybe the best team in football last week. So they are kind of in the C-plus end of the C-tier. And the Commanders, I love the way they ran the ball. 
mainly with Brian Robinson. I, I have a problem with Jaden Daniels and him taking off a lot. He drops back, he drops his eyes, and he goes. I, I it, it drives me nuts because that doesn't make an NFL quarterback, of course, is going to be flashy, and he's going to figure it out. He's going to get better, so I'm not writing him off or anything like that. But stuff like that drives me nuts. You know, it's great in college, not so much in the NFL. Um, so he's got to figure that out. You know, one thing, you know, when he escapes pressure, sacks, and he circus play and he runs, that that's great, you know. But the plays where he takes a three-step drop, drops his eyes, runs. I can't stand that stuff, you know. So he's got to figure that out. But, again, Brian Robinson on the ground looked really good. Overall, wasn't they won. They needed a win against at home against a division rival. I thought they got outplayed in this game. The Giants kicker, Gano, went down in pregame. Otherwise, if you watch this game, the Giants win this game with their kicker. A lot of times when you do that, it's an assumption. The Giants win this game with, with their kicker here, uh, given the two-point conversions and not kicking at the end, the neighbors dropping the ball, Singletary fumbled the ball to start the second half. So commanders made plays, of course, but they were, and they're, you know, step forward. You know, they weren't bad. Uh, pretty lucky in this one, though. The Titans at a C range. I thought about bumping them up because, once again, you can argue that they, you can argue, not for sure, that they outplayed their opponent once again you could say the I mean, the Titans should have should have won they could be 2-0 and oh, and the defense looked really good besides a couple slip-ups and things didn't really go their way there was a miss holding call in the end zone on sauce uh, you know and the block punt you know so a little unlucky could have won the game but at the end of the day Levis is sloppy not much going for the offense they move the ball at times though but not much going for the offense you know again Levis bad decisions in crucial moments and again the the block punt happened. Again, they have, probably have the worst special teams in football right now, so that plays a part, so we put them in the C tier. Ravens had production. Don't know why they didn't run the ball more with Henry or Lamar. I thought bad coaching, actually, in that game. Uh, but, yeah, just can't put full drives together. Just a little, still a little sloppy. And, um, you know, the fact that they should win that game, going into it and looking what happened during the game, and they don't, Kind of puts them in the C tier themselves. It's very disappointing. The Giants, I, I thought the Giants outplayed the Commanders. We talked about that. So they're going to be on this. They lost the game at the end of the day. Gano getting hurt, uh, really hurt them. I thought Daniel Jones stepped it up. Singletary was really good besides the fumble. Neighbors was good besides the last drop. But, uh, you know, they played a lot better this week. They did enough to win that game. It was a little unfortunate. But the defense can't let that drive, can't let that drive happen at the end. And the Bears... Offense is miserable right now. Um, not prepared. Offensive line's brutal. Caleb Williams is not, you know, you can see he's he's a lot further away from pro ready than some thought, um, you know, early, but struggling with that transition a little bit. But the defense is so good, and once again, they're in a game. Maybe that they shouldn't be in. Somehow they won last week, uh, but they're in that game at the end, so they find ways to kind of stick in there. I think it's because of defense, and man, Coaching in terms of preparing the offense, specifically in the offensive line, is not good. But I think Eberflus does a good job, you know, coaching that defense. And, and uh, maybe a reason they were somehow still in that game. So they're probably in the bottom part of the C tier, C minus, close to be deep, close to being deep. But the, the defense looks pretty damn good, as expected, though. The B C tier, the Jets defense played all right, offense played all right, nothing great. Some flashy plays here and there. Brees Hall, uh, Braylon Allen, the rookie running back, uh, two touchdowns. And, you know, so nothing. I feel like they got better though. So you know, you can't put them in the C tier. Felt like they got better. They play a tough defense. I think the Titans are better than the zero and two record that they have. But yeah, at times it was it felt like maybe a little, little fortunate. At times it felt like the Titans were outplaying them a, a bit. You could you can make a case, not saying it's a fact, not saying it's my opinion, but you can make a case the Titans outplayed them for the majority of the game. So yeah, kind of in the middle there for the Jets. The Browns outplay the Jaguars. A lot of distractions going in this game, so they overcome that. Uh, I think they should have put the Jags away in this game. So you kind of got a little stale for a little bit. Defense played well. I, I thought to get a better grade or to put them away, to run the ball more. Jerome Ford was running well. I know there was a big run that kind of made him run well, but he still had that. You know, so I thought they went away from the run too easily there. I thought that was working. You know, too many pass attempts while having the lead and the, while the run's working, the passes, eh. You know, Steelers, interesting one. Defense played very well again. Obviously, as they should against Bo Nix and the Broncos, they played very well. Offensively, yeah, you could say it's a little underwhelming. You wish there was a more there was more in the pass game, but you could argue why why I thought about bumping the Steelers up a little bit. I you know, perfect world, get a little more going on offense. But what I liked about the Steelers, they they knew their opponent. You know, the Broncos weren't really threatening. 
Let's hit the brakes a little bit. Let's run the clock. And they did have a touchdown taken off the board. Pickens had a touchdown and a big play taken off the board. But the touchdown was a pick play. Could argue either side. I thought the defenders made contact, you know, first. So it's kind of tough to call it in that situation. Um, so my point is, if that stood as a touchdown, maybe we'd be looking at it a little dip. We would be looking at it a little differently. But overall, Steelers have been good through two. Chiefs. Pretty fortunate to win. I, I thought they got outplayed by the Bengals, but there was some good there. Mahomes was a little off his game, but they still find a way to win. Defense still clutched up, make plays. Pacheco was running good. Um, unfortunately, um, you know he gets injured. Uh, but then it's a team that just makes plays when they need to. And the Bengals much better than last week. Uh, if they won this game, they they would be in the. It was still a little sloppiness, but they did play the Chiefs, so they'd be in at least the B tier. Uh, but they had it. They let it slip away. They let it choke. They, you know, it, it, it was the right call at the end. People were always going to debate it because of the Chiefs. The right call. Stupid play. You know, by Anthony that was tough. And then, um, you know, the fumble that Connor picked up for a touchdown. So, man, so once again, some things that just co- don't quite go their way. But they played much better uh, this week and played a good team. The Patriots continue to run the ball well. Gibson, you know, played well. This is a weird game because the Patriots kind of gave up a lot through the air on defense, which we weren't really expecting, but because it's a very good defense, but had a good pass rush, stopped the run very well. So there's still some good on defense. The offense stuck in there, forced overtime. So the Patriots have been better, playing better than expected for sure as they're one and one. And one. Lions a tough one to grade as well because they, they should handle business here in this game. Home again. The Bucks are ripped with injuries in the secondary. The Lions want to pass more. Here's your opportunity. Um, you know, yeah. golf making mistakes, and they let this one slip. And I think it's a little more painful because they should win it again, given the circumstances. The Bucks are really injured, but man, they outgained the Bucks. That they put up so many yards. They moved the ball. They couldn't execute in the big moments. I guess uh, it was a matter of running Gibbs more. I thought to win the game, but they're trying to get golf to do things. And again, a lot of yards, a lot of production. But that's kind of the bad thing. Like, Goff couldn't really execute fully when it's on him. He kind of needs the run game to be even more involved. That's kind of the bad thing. And what does that mean? You, if Recent years, it felt like, you know, to win a Super Bowl, you need that pass game. So, I think that's what the Lions are testing out. So, that test really isn't great because they just squeaked by the Rams. They kind of had to go back to their old good ways in overtime to win that game. So, it doesn't really look great. But at the same time, there are some positives I like for the Lions here, which really has nothing to do with this video. But... Um, they can easily go back to their old game, that run game, and it can look dominant. The NFL right now is look is gearing towards that, where the run is dominating. Teams can't stop the run right now, uh, and the the rush the rushing attacks are making a comeback. And what's dominating the NFL, and they're kind of being sneaky, testing some other things, putting some other things on tape. So there are some positive things moving forward with the lines that I actually like, kind of some sneaky takes that other people may not have. But um, overall, they should win this game. Goff's got to find a way to f- execute and finish drives, even though he did have some production. And you don't put a lot on him for the first interception, but the second one, I don't know what the hell that was. But So another weird team to kind of grade there, but they're an interesting team to watch going forward. A lot of teams are, really. The B tier, let's just let's just talk about the Eagles. That game just happened. I jumped on and started recording this video right after. Uh, uh, in, in absurd ending to that game, both teams overall look pretty good. Maybe minus run defense. Sound like a broken record. Everyone's got a run defense defense problem. But Eagles had that game wrapped up. They had that game wrapped up. I mean, an absolute choke. Uh, do you blame? We talked about it on Twitter. Do you blame the play call to throw it to you know to throw it in that situation, getting a little too cute? Do you blame Barkley? Because I mean, the play call worked. He was wide open. You you fully expect. A million on a million times to, for that to work. If it's that perfect, he drops it. Uh, was he focused a little bit too much upfield, which is an absolute no in that situation. You don't even really want to, you know, score. You, you you go down, the game's over, but whatever. Uh, or do you blame the defense playing prevent in that situation, which was pretty bad. As you know that the Falcons are heating up on offense. They're, the chemistry, they're gaining chemistry as time goes on. So that was brutal. Um it's overall they played good. They played well and they were unlucky to lose uh, this game. They played well and there was some big time positives. They were about to be a, uh, you know, at least in this video and soaring up the power rankings. So that was very unfortunate. Uh, but there there are some good things. But man, that defense can't give up. Yeah, it's just wild. You know, it's a tough tough to grade them. And the Texans, pretty much the same two weeks in a row for the most part. Like there's explosive plays. They look good at times on both sides of the ball. How, you know, 
based on how both those games went, how are there is their opponent still in the game with them? That, that's I was confused both weeks with them, you know, on that with them. So uh, it felt like they completely outplayed the Bears. The Bears had no chance, but yep, they get the ball back and it didn't go very far in that last drive. But they get the ball back, but then have an opportunity to not only you know not tie the game, win the game if they score. So that was a little sketchy. So when when they dominate teams, I want them to put them away. Uh, but offense went a little stale. Maybe they hit the brakes a little bit too much. Um, you know, looking at it that way, maybe maybe lower than, than a B, but defense was outstanding. I love that they kind of add something else to their game because D'Amico Ryan's a really good defensive coach. They add the, you know, not really a blitzer. Add that, they looked really polished doing that. So, and they're still so explosive. Nico Collins has been awesome, you know, and mixing going. And, and, you know, if Akers doesn't fumble, like they have this game easily, maybe maybe the score shows what, what kind of what, how it felt, the game felt. So still put them at a B. The Bucks. Uh, impressive win against the Lions in Detroit while they have a bunch of injuries and more guys even getting hurt. Uh, they find a way to win. They did get outgained. They did give a bit of production, but they clutch up. Baker clutches up. Um, it wasn't pretty. You know, they didn't do a whole lot of great things. You know, Godwin was great. Baker on that one series was great. More than one series, but, um, you know, red zone defense. You know, so it wasn't as pretty as last week, but that is a clutch, clutch win. And then Seattle, and an interesting team to grade as well because they didn't run the ball well. How are the Patriots in the game with them? How are they going to overtime? I hated that it was earlier in the second half where they uh, they went for it instead of kicking a field goal. Know your opponent. This is kind of a field goal fest type game, back and forth. You needed a field goal there. I said it at the time, and it ended up, you know, they go to overtime because of that. You know, fast forward a little bit. So saying all those things, you almost want to put them in the BC tier, maybe lower, but man, I, I feel them clicking a little bit more. They, they were great through the air. The Patriots are still there. Even though they're supposed to be a bad team, they're better than that. But besides the point, it's still a really good defense and a well-coached defense out there. For them to get the passing game going like that, Geno played good. DK, JSN really getting going. Uh, very explosive. That's why I thought they were a sneaky team this year. Ryan Grubb's offense can be explosive. Tough to deal with you know, uh, offense through the air and we saw that and we saw it kind of clicking into gear and they got going and they did outplay the Patriots. They did outplay them. They had a tough time starting Antonio, uh, stopping, excuse me, Antonio Gibson uh, in this one. But I, I liked where things are heading here uh, with this one. I think they're pretty well coached minus that decision to go for it on, uh, on fourth down. I knew that was brutal at the time. Just know, know your opponent, know, know how the game's going, know the situation there. But Seattle, Passing game could could be sneaky here. A tier, let's talk about the Falcons. I mean, wild ending uh to that game that just ended. And you could you could definitely make the case, I could agree with you on some level, that A tier for the Falcons, they got very lucky. They did get very lucky, and they struggled stopping the run mainly mainly with Hertz there and, and Barkley. And if Barkley catches that ball, the Falcons lose. But I liked what I saw from the Falcons for the most part, besides the run defense, a lot of teams, uh, you know, you can see them. We talked about last week. We talked about going into the year. Could, could chemistry hold them back a little bit? Is it going to take some time for them to figure it out? And last week they were all, uh, you know, super sloppy, all out of, you know, not on the same page, what I'm trying to say with C cousins in that offense, London, all those guys. And you could see it happening more and more and more throughout this game. Look at that last drive. I mean, Mooney's definitely a weapon for sure. Um, London, great route in that touchdown. Bijan was awesome. So they were able to, they got better throughout the game, making that progress of what they can become because this is an upside team for this year. Kirk was playing better. The receivers were playing better. They were getting on the same page. Bijan ran well all night besides that stuff that they had at the end that we thought maybe could have ended the game. Um, D d defensively, I mean, they, they made some plays here and there. Jesse Bates gets the interception. He, Jesse Bates made a, you know, made a big-time play uh, on the goal line as well earlier in the game. They couldn't stop the run, but overall, I, I, they played well in multiple ways. They found a way to win, even though they're lucky, and they're just showing clear signs of, in, of chemistry improvement and just overall improvement getting better. So I thought they're deserving of being in the A tier. If they would have lost, they probably would have been high end B. If the Eagles would have won, they would have been high end A probably. Uh, and the Packers, you could say it was a little close. It wasn't like the pretty, you know, most explosive thing on the ground it was. But Malik Willis getting thrown in there against the Colts. He was on a different team a few weeks ago. He played very well, very well coached game, very well called game. 
run game was dominant. You worry about the defense in this game because they couldn't stop the run last week in Brazil. Uh, they, they were great across the board. They dominated this game more than the score showed. Jacobs was awesome, but if he didn't fumble in the first half, this probably would have been an ass beating because it was right on the goal line. So uh, how they played, you know, forget the score, how they played, and given the circumstances, how they prepared for this game, I think they were deserving of an A. And the Raiders, you know, there was another one that wasn't, like, super pretty, I guess, but because um, there was times where they were outplayed by the Ravens. The Ravens, you know, if matter of them just running the ball more, maybe. But, man, Minshew was pretty efficient. 30 completed passes. The weapons showed out. Devontae Adams, Brock Bowers, they were clutch. I thought the play calling and play designs, you know, the play book, I thought looked good. And there's some people doubting that with the Raiders in this game. Defense was great, keeping the Ra- the Ravens out of the end zone for the most part, you know, forcing field goals. It was a missed one in there. Max Crosby was great. So, just a, and then, you know, given who they beat, the, you know, Ravens with that extra break, you know, pissed off at the Chiefs win in Baltimore. Tough team to deal with, especially this time of the year. Uh, all that, I think you got to put the Ra- uh, the Raiders in uh, that A tier there. So, uh, surprising, but very impressive win. Uh, for Vegas and the very best tier of week two and again this is based on only the week two games the Bills Thursday night shellacking didn't have to do a whole lot you know so that's actually good you know you didn't have to showcase everything and you still won big and uh, James Cook was awesome with the running game elevated defensively they were very well coached very well prepared especially in the secondary the way they were able to contain everyone and uh, you know, put Tua in the pass rush was getting after Tua but put him in awkward situations uh, I Run defense, though. The Dolphins would have ran the ball more. than the Bills still would have won. But it could have been a little more interesting. The play calling was really bad there. But I, another team, you kind of a good team that you wonder about the run defense. But dominated this game in Miami. Tough place to play this time of the year. Uh, huge for, for their season as a whole in the AFC East. Uh, the Vikings, again, up here. You know, playing who we thought was the best team in football last week and definitely one of the better teams in football. Everyone knows that. The 49ers and the Vikings outplay them. They outplay them by more than what the score shows. They shouldn't let them back in it, but they ran the ball well. Ty Chandler, they threw the ball well. Sam Darnold, Justin Jefferson, Jalen Naylor, uh, all these guys making plays. Offensive line seems to be getting better and better. Um, you know, just think a few years ago, they were one of the worst in football for a long stretch. And then defensively in this game, they, they gave up some plays, but they made big time plays. I mean, you can go down the list of how many different guys played and made plays. So very well uh, coached game from both sides, Kevin O'Connell and Brian Flores. So uh, impressive for, for the Minnesota Vikings, Sam Darnold, Minnesota Vikings. The Saints, once again, uh, just completely sna- uh, pounded the snot, excuse me, out of the Cowboys. Camara was awesome. Um, they did a really good job game planning uh, on defense as well. I, I very well coached in this game. Very well coached. Uh, just a bunch of guys making plays there and just being the far better team. So uh, dominating a really good team like that is going to put you up here no matter what. You don't have to really say much else. And the Cardinals very much impressed with the Cardinals. I know they played a pretty uh, they played a pretty depleted de- depleted team. I'm having a hard time. It's pretty late. Depleted team in the Rams. I don't really care. They looked really good. Kyler was awesome. He's the best quarterback I saw this week. He looked pretty good in week one, too. Marvin Harrison Jr. stepped up. I talked about in the winners and losers video. It's like a lot of positivity. Like the They looked pretty good last week, but they lost, and there's still some negative things people are talking about. Boom, you fix those things. You're on a positive note going forward. Uh, running games there. James Conner, very physical. Uh, and defensively made big time plays. Actually got uh, a big time pass rush, even though some people were doubting that. So, you know, some sneaky teams right there at the top so far this year. The Cardinals, even though they're one and one, you, you combine both those games, you actually watch. They feel good. They feel like a sneaky team. The Saints, I mean, been maybe the most dominant team in football through two. And the Vikings been very, very impressive. A little bit of a surprise and beat one of the best Niners. Which of these teams are for real? Which one is it just the early season hype and it's gonna gonna calm down? Could it be all of them? None of them? One of them? You know. So it's very interesting. But those three teams uh, have really caught my eye. I'm pretty sure your guys' eye as well. Um, so that that's why it's fun. Let's see the let's see the season kind of take shape here as we get into week three. We got our week three content right around the corner. Picks video tomorrow night at Tuesday night. Score predictions. So join us for all that. Check out that winners and losers of week two video. You can watch that as well. Loads of content here, so make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on. You will not regret it. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.